what is the respiratory membrane. So we have done this at as the as the air moves in, it goes through the respiratory airways, which is trachea, then bronchi, then smaller bronchi. Finally, we reach the bronchioles, then we reach respiratory bronchioles. So let's say this is a respiratory bronchiole, which then opens up in a sac, alveolar sac, which has alveoli attached to it, right? And then there is blood supply in this area. And so that is the respiratory zone. We've done that in the histology. I don't want to waste your time here. I am going to take one of this alveolus and draw it here. So let's say here is the alveolus. What do we have in the alveolus? Number one, the innermost layer is the fluids. These fluids also have surfactant in them, right? So there's not just water and ions and stuff, it has surfactant as well. Then this is the epithelial layer, right? So these are, there are epithelial cells of alveoli pneumocytes type 1 and then 10% of the cells are type 2 pneumocytes type 2 pneumocytes and then there are type 1 pneumocytes. Really thin, thin system. How thin? I, I'll explain that in a second. If, let me, let me do that right now. If you take an adult person's lungs, my lungs, and you spread them, it actually makes about 70 square meter surface area. What does that mean? That means if you take a room that is, if you take a room that is 25 by 30, so 25 feet by 30 feet, like a living room normally, and if you spread the lungs on it, they would cover the whole floor of it. And here is even more shocking thing. See, I gotten this, this little measuring cup here, and this measuring cup may be showing you about 50, 60 milliliter of water in it. Let's call it blood. What is the stroke volume normally in a healthy person? Um, about 70 milliliter, right? So this is 60. I can make it 70 or so. So that is the stroke volume, about 70. Normally, lungs at any time are filled from 60 to 160 milliliter, depending upon what the person is doing and his size and cardiac output and so on. But this is the amount of blood present in the lungs at one time. Right now, this is the blood. This is the blood that is, if I take this blood, and let's say my room right now is 25 by 25, so let's make it 25 by 30. I have to spread this blood, I have to spread this blood throughout this floor. How thin layer will I make? One molecule thick layer. I can't physically do it. If I sp spill that over here, it will just get absorbed and be done. This is the total blood that is needed to do the gaseous exchange in 30 by 25 feet room. So please remember that it's such an interesting thing. But that is why the gaseous exchange is so rapid as well. Blood comes in, uh, sorry, air comes in and exchange happens and air goes out. We, about, we exchange about 4 liter of oxygen per minute. Okay, so here pneumocyte type 2, pneumocyte type 1. Then under the pneumocyte, we know that all, all cells that are surface cells usually have basement membrane under them, always have basement membrane. So this is the basement membrane. Then underneath the basement membrane is the interstitial tissue. I want to make that green as well. So make sure that you can differentiate between the basement membrane and the interstitial tissue. So this is the inter interstitial tissue. That is this one. This is the basement membrane. Which basement membrane? This is the epithelial basement membrane. Okay. Then what do we get? Then let's say we have a blood vessel. So if we have a blood vessel, we're going to have the basement membrane for that blood vessel. 
I'm going to make it black. So here is the basement membrane for the endothelial cells. Then will be the blood vessel endothelium itself, capillary. So there are the endothelial cells present, right? On on other sides of the capillary as well. And then is the blood plasma. And then in there are the RBCs. And I make the RBC like it is squeezing through this because RBC actually do get squeezed. They are 8 micrometer, the capillary diameter is 5 micrometer, this is 5 micrometer. So RBC actually becomes like this. When it is going through the capillary, blood is pushing it and RBC almost becomes like this. It gets stuck and it is pushed through the capillary. This also allows the gases to directly enter the RBC instead instead of going into the plasma and then going into the RBC. Okay, so now let's see what is this membrane made up of. Oxygen has to travel from the fluid layer. It is water uh, soluble, so it would do that. Then through the lipid membrane and again it very easily moves through the lipid. It is actually lipid soluble as well. Carbon dioxide is 20 times more soluble in water than oxygen, but they both are lipid soluble. Carbon monoxide is lipid soluble, nitrogen is lipid soluble. So they will pass through the cells easily, then they will pass through the interstitium, then they will pass through the basement membrane of the endothelium, then the endothelial cells and either inside directly the, the RBC or out in the plasma and then from there to the RBC. Guys, thank you very much for watching. Uh, make sure that you like, subscribe and share this video. Like it if you like it. If you don't like it, then don't like it. And then uh, subscribe if you want more videos. We upload videos regularly. So if you sub subscribe to the channel, you can get a notification and the video will appear in your inbox. And if you hit the uh, bell button as well, then you can get the notifications for this as well.